So today is Bezot Hanukkah. It's the last day of Hanukkah. It'll be the last day that I have the lit up menorah in the background, although I thought about keeping it up. Um, but it'll probably be until next year. Um, I have just completed today a, a segala. Uh, a segala is something, I thought about writing about this. I've written several essays in the last month and a couple of them have gotten published and a couple have been rejected uh, in certain uh, Jewish publications. And I thought about, uh, I thought about writing about doing a segala. A segala, um, well, if you're an Orthodox Jew, you follow the commandments anyway. If you're a man, you have certain commandments you're supposed to follow that are specific to you. If you're a woman, you have certain commandments you're supposed to follow that are specific to her. And then there are commandments that both follow, like um, uh, keeping Shabbat, uh, following the rules of the, the Sabbath. Uh, for a woman, um, you are supposed to light Shabbat candles. For a man, you're supposed to wrap tefillin on weekday mornings uh, when you say your prayers, things like that. And so for Orthodox Jews, a segula is when you take on a, a, an act of religious observance that you are not required to do, but you choose to do it, usually for a set amount of time, usually for 40 days. It might be giving more to charity. It might be um, uh, lighting an extra candle at Shabbat. It might be fasting. It might be studying an extra uh, section of Torah or Talmud that you maybe haven't been studying. And you take on that observance with the idea that you, you have some kind of um, you have some kind of prayer request, uh, the petition of God of Hashem, and you take on that act with the idea of hopefully uh, meriting special favor um, with God, uh, with either hearing your prayer, being worthy of what you're asking for, or getting some kind of spiritual um, guidance uh, that maybe you're wanting the wrong thing. But I will say most people, it's kind of a folk tradition that most people do it with, a, with the hope that their, their prayer will be not only heard, but answered in the affirmative. Uh, and that's among Orthodox Jews. Among non-Orthodox Jews, usually a segula is when you, you have a certain request um, and you usually take on something that you probably should be doing anyway, some type of actual observance, like uh, like saying the Shema or abstaining from non-kosher food or something like that, stuff that Orthodox Jews already do. And usually it's for a 40 day period. And um, segalas usually are done for people who are seeking to be married, single people who are wanting to be married, uh, infertile couples who are wanting a child, um, things like that. It may also be done on behalf of somebody who is, uh, who is quite ill, um, quite sick. And, uh, and there could be other reasons, but those are kind of like the top three. And really the top two I've always known are people who are seeking specifically betrothal. They're, they're seeking someone to marry and infertile couples who are seeking uh, a child. And um, one of the most common things to do in Israel people will go to the hotel for 40 days. They will go rain or shine, snow, whatever. They will go to the Western Wall and say their prayers. Obviously, if you don't live in Israel, you cannot do that. And so you have this thing where you can pay for somebody to go every single day for 40 days, regardless of the weather, to, um, to say a prayer for you at the hotel, at the, at the, um, at the, uh, the Western Wall. And I was a little embarrassed to say this, but I did that. I actually paid like $100 back in November for um, a segala that started towards the end of November and it ends today. It ends on the eighth night or the eighth day of Hanukkah. And uh, they had some recommendations for acts of observance for me to do, which I already do. They're like, say the Shema. Well, I, I do say the Shema. Um, I just made sure this time when I woke up, I really made sure I said it. Um, they said, uh, you know, maybe abstain from pork or whatever. Well, I don't eat meat. I already kind of keep kosher. Uh, but they also, uh, they told me to pray Psalm 32 every day. And so I did. I, I prayed Psalm 32 every day for 40 days. And I also decided to do my own segala of praying, or I say praying, reading through the book of Psalms, the book of Tehillim, all 150 um, during this time. And I did that. I, I, I got a, um, actually have, uh, this is common among Orthodox Jews. I have different copies of this. I got an actual, just, it's just the book of Psalms in Hebrew and English. And I just, I read through them. And I, if you read like a little over three a day, you were able to get through it. And I actually, um, read over that and I, I was able to, to finish a, a couple days ago. I started a little later than I meant to. And so I would read more. And then I, I finished it a couple days ago. 
uh, and then they give you a prayer that's being said on your behalf at the at the hotel, and I would pray it as well every day, and I will say lately a couple times a day. And my my prayer, um, you know, I'm not a couple uh, wanting to have a child. I'm, I am, thank God, not terminally ill or seriously ill. Um, I, I've been praying for um, two things. And they actually usually ask you to pray for just one, to focus really on one. And I've mostly focused on one and then another was attached. And what I've been praying for, or having someone pray for me for, uh, is helping to find um, someone to share my life with. Um, I don't, the, the phrase soulmate always kind of, it it's kind of icky um, because of the way it's used in the culture, but, um, but soulmate and in Judaism, it, it's a little more, it's a little more about the soul and that person that you are, you are tied to. And I, I, I did, I, I've asked for that and I asked for clarity about my job, but really my job and seeking a future with somebody are both kind of tied together right now. And so I, I did, I, I, paid the hundred dollars in early November. It started in late November. Um, and, and it's, it's an act of charity. And then, um, and then somebody has been going to the hotel every day for 40 days. And I get a reminder every single day, except for Shabbat, um, that, Hey, this is the day that someone's praying for you. This is the prayer they are saying. And it was funny because one of the things, uh, the last line of the prayer, most of it is about, looking for a person that I can spend my life with. And they use my Hebrew name, which is Ari Ben Hadar. And then they put your mother's name. My mother is Deborah Rachel, uh, uh, Deborah Rachel um, in, in Hebrew. That's not her English name, but that's her Jewish name. And um, they pray for you, uh, for you to find the person that you should spend your life with, that, that will be um, someone that you can enhance and they can enhance. Uh, you, you, they can enhance you. The idea is that you, you work together, you form two become one. And then the last line um, says to, uh, to live uh, with clarity. And I liked that. That was what I was looking for. I, said, I was looking for clarity about what to do about the future. And so I said to live with clarity. And, um, and so I've prayed that prayer every single day for 40 days, read Psalm 32 every single day for 40 days, read the whole book of Psalms to Helam over the course of 40 days. And uh, I've prayed those prayers and those Psalms in particular, uh, that Psalm in particular, a couple of times lately in the last week as we were getting closer to today. And it's not a magic formula. There are people who have done, uh, uh, segalot would be the plural um, for the same issue multiple times. I just, I decided to be open to it. And, uh, and so I did, I, I did a segala, um, looking for the person to spend my life with. Um, there is a person that I hope is that person in particular. Um, there's a person that I, I very much, uh, love and would want to be that person, um, that I've known, uh, I haven't known an incredible long time, but I've known for a short time. And um, it does not appear at the moment that we will be able, it does not appear that we are necessarily matched in what we both want. We both have feelings for one another, um, have expressed romantic interest in one another, but we are also both very incredibly different. Uh, and our situations in life are pretty complicated. Um, but at the same time, and so one of the goals of that prayer is to be able to, to know whether or not pursuing this is good. But I will admit mostly it was because I really do hope that this person and I, because after what we've both been through on our own with previous relationships, what happened with me and mine. Um, we both deserve some happiness and I would really like to find happiness with this person. Um, I would like to be the person this, this uh, woman finds happiness with. And so I did a segala 
I don't have any more clarity than I thought I would, but you often don't uh, at the moment. The idea is that you pray for this and the answer will come eventually, um, not necessarily immediate. But uh, it was something I tried. And I think that sometimes to be vulnerable, to say this is what I'm hoping for, not as a magical formula, it's not like that. Um, it's just to be vulnerable and say, this is what I want in life. And I'm willing to, to put it out there, not only to God, but to say to other people, hey, I'm putting this out there. And I'm, I'm trying to merit that if I'm wrong, that I will be directed towards what is right. And if I'm right, that the boundaries or circumstances that keep me and us from having a future together will will be um, will be taken away and we will both know in our hearts what is right for us so it's the end of the segala and we will see what happens going forward but i thought it was an interesting thing it's not something that you're going to find like in an intro to judaism book and it's not something honestly that i would have probably done in the last couple years but um, I wouldn't even say desperate, but I would also say vulnerable, vulnerable, to, <clears throat> excuse me, vulnerable times calls, uh, call for vulnerable, uh, measures. And so I did it. <laughs>